going to sing two familiar carols today, Christmas carols, so I didn't bring the words because you know these. Let's start with Hark the Herald Angels Sing. We're just going to sing the first verse, so I think you know the words. Sing with me. Hark the Herald Angels Sing, glory to the newborn King, peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconcile. Joyful all ye nations rise, join the triumph of the skies, with angelic hosts proclaim, Christ is born in Bethlehem. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king. And we're going to learn how the angels did sing um, about Christ being born in Bethlehem and how we need to proclaim that to everybody as well or tell that to everyone. Let's sing joy to the world. Just the first verse, now you know this. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature sing. Good singing this morning. Well, boys and girls, we're going to have a very, very familiar story today. But what we're going to look at it a little differently than we have before as we study the story of when Jesus was born. Because this is the last Sunday we'll be together before Christmas Day. And so we wanted to have the story of the actual birth of Jesus. And But what I want us to do is study the characters the characters are people in a story, and they're the most important people in the story. And we're going to learn from several of these characters lessons that I think God wants us to know as well. So as I read some of this scripture now, don't just block it out thinking, oh, I've heard that so many times. Listen very carefully, and then we're going to talk about what we learn from the characters but before we do, let's ask God to show us what he wants us to learn. Our hands we fold, our head we bow as we talk to God just now. Dear God, thank you for your true word, the Bible. Help us to learn from these characters today lessons that you want to teach us. And we ask all this in your name. Amen. Well, we're going to begin with the most familiar from the most familiar book of the story of the birth of Jesus in God's true word, the Bible, from Luke chapter 2. And first, let's look just at the first seven verses. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. In other words, it's like the president of the United States saying to you, you must go back to the place where you were born and register your name so that we can count you. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David because he belonged to the house and line of David. So he had to go back to Bethlehem because that it was the head of the house, it was Joseph, and that's where he had been born. So he went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. Now that last line is what I want you to think about right now. 
in that inn, there was no room for Jesus. Well, boys and girls, have you made room for Jesus into your heart? Or do you get so busy with the things you want to do that you forget to read God's Word? Or you get busy and you don't come to Sunday school or church uh, to learn more about God? Or spend time praying because you're too busy? Or have you just been so busy that you have not thought when we've talked about talking to mom and dad and Pastor Ron about the next step in asking Jesus to come into your heart. Have you made room in your heart for Jesus? That night, there was no room for him in the end. Make room for him in your heart. Let's go on now, verses 8 through 20, and we're going to look at this, some other characters, the shepherds and the angels. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy to all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in the manger. Well, suddenly, boys and girls, a great company, that means a whole lot of people, a whole lot of angels, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, Peace to those on whom his favor rests. So boys and girls, what do we learn from those angels? To praise God. They were praising God because he had sent the Savior of the world, Jesus, to be born, to come to earth. And he came to earth to live and show us how to live and love others. But also the main reason he came was to die for your sins and mine. So these angels praised him. How often do you praise God? Do you just start your prayer time by asking him things? Or do you start like we do on Sunday morning with the popcorn praise, praising him first? So I ask you, learn this from the angels. Would you be willing to learn from the angels to praise God? every day. Well, let's go on. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. And when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherd said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Boys and girls, we can learn lots of lessons from the shepherds. First of all, what did they do when the angel spoke to them? They left their work. They left those sheep and left everything and hurried to find Jesus. Do you go first thing to God's true word that every day and read and see what God wants to teach you about him? We learned that they hurried and they went immediately and to, to find Jesus. And when they found Jesus, they left praising God and telling everybody that they came in contact with what they had seen and what the angels had told them, that this was the Savior of the world. So they were our very first missionaries. 
And remember, I've told you before, we are all missionaries wherever we live. And that means that we want to share the good news of Jesus with everyone. Let's do it just like the, the shepherds did. As soon as we ask Jesus to enter into our hearts and come to know him as our Savior, let's tell everybody that good news and share it with everyone. Well, now we're going to go over to the book of Matthew, the first book in the New Testament. And we're going to look in chapter 2. First, let's look at verses 1 and 2 and see who our characters are. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi, that means wise men, from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born? King of the Jews, we saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. As soon as they saw that star, they had studied the scriptures of the Old Testament and that they knew that this was to show them where Jesus would be born. And so we move on down um, to how they kept following the star until they found Jesus. So let's look at verses 9 and 2. The star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. God was guiding them to find the baby Jesus. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Boys and girls, we are told by many people who have studied uh, the Bible for a long time that it may have been as long as two years before they were able to find Jesus. So this meant that the wise men didn't give up. They kept looking and looking and searching and searching well, you know, that's what we need to do. Even after we ask Jesus into our heart, remember what I've told you in the Wordless book that the green page says, grow in the grace and knowledge and of the Lord and Jesus. And it, that means to keep studying his word. Keep trying to learn more and more and more about him. Just like the wise men kept searching for him search to more, learn more about him by studying his word every day. And then what did they do when they found him? They bowed down and worshiped him. The way we do this is by singing praises to him, by praying, by coming to church and studying his word. And this is how we worship him. So I ask you, are you worshiping him daily? by reading God's word and pray. And also, they presented him with gifts, their very best gifts. Well, let me ask you something. You, do you just leave use your leftover time? These are gifts that you have. Time, talents, and resources. That means money and uh, material things. So do you just take what's left over of the time in the day and say a quick prayer before you get in bed? Or do you begin your day praying and praising God for who he is and asking him to lead you? You know, I love to sing that little chorus that we sing. Good morning, God. This is your day. I am your child. Show me your way. That's when we ask Jesus to be with us all day long and show us what where he wants us to go that day and what he wants us to do. And so let's give him the best part of our day. And then our gifts, those are ta our talents. That's the things God has given us the ability to do. It might be teaching. It might be playing the piano or another instrument or singing or um, cooking. And there are just many ways that you can serve God. So are you using your gifts to serve God? 
and then money. The actual, we've learned during Christmas that we have opportunities to give to the Lighty Moon Christmas offering. And all of that money goes to support missionaries so they can tell people in the other parts of the world who've never heard about Jesus. We are so blessed, boys and girls. We have churches all over that we can come and study God's Word, but there are places where the people have never heard the story of Jesus. And so let's give of our time, our talents, and our money in order to serve Jesus and give our very best, just as the wise men did. So we've learned from the shepherds to go immediately every day to God's Word and learn more about Him. We learned also from the shepherds to go and tell other people what we've learned about Jesus. And we learned from the angels and the shepherds to praise God for who He is. And then from the wise men, to keep looking, keep searching. That means keep studying God's Word. So, boys and girls, let's take all of these um, wonderful lessons we learn from these characters in the Christmas story, and let's use them every day to share the good news of Jesus with everyone. And the very first thing I told you was that we need to make room in our hearts. We never want to say no room. As they said that first Christmas, we want to open our hearts wide and say, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come in today. Come in to stay. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Let's have our praise time. Our hands we fold. Our head we bow as we talk to God just now. Dear God, help us to share the good news every day. I praise you that you are the Savior. You came to save me from my sins. You are my Redeemer. You brought me back from sin. You are love. You loved me so much that you were willing to leave heaven and come to earth to die for my sins. You're my provider. You're my protector. You are King of kings and Lord of lords. You are the sustainer, the glue that holds me together. You are my refuge, my safe place. You are my strength. Hallelujah, what a Savior. Now let's thank God for what he did when he sent Jesus. For God so loved the world, he gave his only son to die on Calvary's tree. From sin to set me free, someday he's coming back. What glory that will be, wonderful his love to me. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation so rich and free amen well boys and girls the birth of jesus is the best news ever so go everywhere you have an opportunity and share that good news with everyone hallelujah what a savior have a blessed Christmas. I love you and God loves you even more.